Hey everyone, I'm Mike from Versapod, and today we're going to walk through the basic setup and use of your Versapod system. By the end of this video, you'll know how to create a start file, use the marker tool, place your pods, and cut a simple part with confidence. To begin, you'll need to create a custom start file that locates your Versapod system relative to your machine home. This file will be the foundation for all your subsequent cut files. First, launch vCarve on your computer. Configure the job dimensions to match the cut area of your machine. Set the XY0 to your machine's home position so that your work is accurately aligned. Now import the DXF file that you received when you purchased your Versapod system. Select all vectors or group them together to ensure everything moves as one unit. Then choose the best location for your base grid based on your machine's cut area, the size of your Versapod system, and any other relevant factors. This placement is entirely up to you. Save this file and use it as the starting point whenever you're ready to cut a job on your machine. Remember, if you're working with multiple machines, you may need to create a unique start file for each one. You'll use this as your base setup for future cuts. If you ever need to change the position of your Versapod, you'll need to create a new start file. In vCarve, create a simple marker toolpath to trace the outline of your part. The tool can have any diameter. I set mine to 1000, and I always run it on the vector. You can play around with the feed rates. I've run mine at 600 IPM for a while now. If you're worried the marker isn't perfectly centered, set your spindle to run at 50 to 100 RPM. The marker tool helps you identify exactly where your part will be cut, so you can place pods in the right spots and make sure your material is positioned correctly on top of them. When you prep material, I recommend giving yourself about a quarter inch of extra material around the edges so the alignment doesn't have to be too tedious. Keep in mind the Z0 you intend to use. I usually set my Z0 at the top of my material surface and program everything from there, including the marker path. I add about a quarter inch extra depth of cut to account for the pod thickness and make sure I contact the surface. Just make sure you have about 50 to 70 thousandths of pressure from the marker full spring. That will ensure a nice line. Adapt your marker depth of cut as necessary to achieve this. Load the marker tool into your spindle or router. Zero the marker, either at the top of your material or the port board. If you already set your Z0, you can just use the tool setter after installing the marker tool. When the pump is on, make sure you don't hear any hissing sounds. That may indicate a leak somewhere. Check that your gauge reads within the acceptable range. It should look like this. Now run the program and let the marker draw your layout. Now change the tool to the cutting bit you're going to use to cut out these shapes. Always remember to re-zero or use the tool setter whenever you change tools. Now that you know where your pods need to go, peel back the film over the ports you plan to use. Next, place the pods over the exposed vacuum ports. Now place your material on top of your pods. Make sure you can't see any of the marker line extending beyond your material. Load your cut file into your CNC software. Confirm that your XYZ zero point matches the file setup. When everything looks good, run the cut.
Now you can turn off the vacuum pump and remove your parts. That's a quick look at how to set up and use your VersaPod system. Thanks for watching.